The Global Troop Resource, trying to put a thousand skills into every troop's backpack. Welcome, everyone, to the Global Troop Resource. I'm here tonight with my co-host, Randy Hardy. Say hello, Randy. Hey, guys. How's it going? We are also here with a Knots Master, David Drybelvis. Hi, you all. And we'll be talking with David. He is a scout master, has been a scout master for 38 years. He's been a cub master and a Weeblows leader for 32 years. He's coming to us from Troop 599 out of Miami, Florida, and has recently joined us at Troop 512 in Springfield, PA. So we'll be getting to talk with David right after this. Hi, I'm Coach Scott from the Global Troop Resource. I'd like to share with you some information about a nonprofit called the Education Alliance for Amateur Radio. These are the guys that I call to help my troop complete the Radio Merit Badge, and they are awesome. If you have any interest in running the Radio Merit Badge for your troop and are on the East Coast, preferably the Mid Atlantic region, they are an excellent resource. They also happen to teach the electronics and electricity merit badges but the Radio Merit Badge is their specialty. Their goal is to promote science, technology, engineering, and math education within organizations like the Scouts, plus communities like first responders and others who use or advance the use of amateur radio. Calling your attention to this nonprofit is just another way that Global Troop Resource is trying to put a thousand skills into every troop's backpack. You can learn more at www radiostemalliance.org. Now, back to the show. Okay, we're back, and as I mentioned, we're going to be talking with David Drybelvis, who is a knots master. David, hi, welcome. Likewise. Terrific. We actually have uh, done some little segments of video the other week. We did the square knot, we're working on the bowlin, and we got a couple of Sheet Ben? Mm -hmm. Great. And one of the cool things that David does is not only does he show us how to tie the knots, but he tells us basic use and history and generally some sort of story behind the knot. As a matter of fact, why don't we watch a two and a half minute segment on the square knot right now. The Global Troop Resource, trying to put a thousand skills into every troop's backpack. Hi, my name is David Drivelvis. I'm with Troop 512 in Springfield, Pennsylvania. And we're going to start with a square knot. The catchy phrase for the square knot is right over left, left over right. The ideal position to teach is standing in front of and to the left of the learner as just like the camera is to with respect to me right now so it's right over left left over right and there we have the two short ends on the same side of the knot the reason why we use it for first aid is that in order to untie the square knot, the quickest way is you pull on both strings of one side of the knot and it collapses into a slip knot. Then you can pull it right off. The, the square knot is such a primitive knot, animals use it. There are birds that build their nests and gorillas build their nests using a square knot. As a matter of fact, the gorillas know the difference between a granny and a square nut. And the mama gorilla baby does a granny instead of a square nut, we'll correct them immediately. <laughs> the cavemen drew square nuts on the cave walls, so we know that it's how primitive it is. The basic use of the square nut in scouting is for first aid. The reason we use it for first aid primarily both tie is easy and untie is easy. And the reason we do not use it to join ropes, especially if the two ropes are of different stiffness or thickness, is that the square knot is very treacherous and will slip and collapse.
That was an awesome clip. So, David, why don't you tell me how you got into knots? Thank you. It started when I was, uh, as a learner, going to Wood Badge, and there's a thing called a ticket, writing your ticket, which is sort of a self-improvement challenge. And the, I identified that my weak subject was knots. So I put it on my ticket that I would improve my knot tying capabilities. So they ask you, well, how will you demonstrate that you have accomplished this? And I said, well, I gave it a lot of thought and I finally said, I will have accomplished that when I'm at a level where I can teach knots. <clears throat> right. And I found that as time went by, they kept calling me for knots and you, you get earmarked into the task. You know, I have other skills. That I, I, like. I gotta interrupt. You, you do not get earmarked. You get roped into it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Thank you for that. I deserve that. And as I did it repeatedly, I started identifying little catchy phrases. You know, just like for a square knot, you do right over left and left over right. Right. Or, or, or for a bowl and the rabbit comes out of the hole, goes around behind the tree, back into the hole, things like that. So I started identifying mnemonic aids for each knot. And uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to make all those available in a, in a PDF file so you can all the catchy phrases. Right. And Get them. Great. So we will post that out on the globaltroopresource.com site, and it'll probably be under the tips and tricks section. Excellent. Awesome. <clears throat> After a while, what happened is I got to teach knots and pioneering <clears throat> for wood badge. And when I was developing my wood badge skills for teaching, which is now bringing the whole skill to a new level, uh, I, was a I was able to fine tune my presentation. In wood badge, in the old wood badge, we used to teach knots for two hours, but this is taught to a class of about 200 and uh, yes, you have three or four assistants, but you're teaching it for two hours. Right. And you have to keep the ball rolling. So that's a, it's a shame that we don't do it any, anymore. I'm going to interrupt bench. you again. You don't keep the ball rolling. You got to string them along. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So now the, that is in IOLS, but IOLS has a session that is about 20 minutes of not tying. So it's not the, what it used to be, but we do with what there is. So, so it's not what it used to be. Not. <laughs> well, that was a big <laughs> ball of yarn. <laughs> <clears throat> So tell me about some of the uh, other knots that you like tying. What's your favorite knot? Well, the bowline is my favorite. I, I have, uh, there right now are 55 ways of commonly tying the bowline. 55, 55 ways. Is, 55 is, uh, there's a lot of knot boards with the 55 bowlines. <laughs> a Norwegian wrote 129 bowlines. Really? But the popular ones are the 55 that are on the knot board. So how many are practical to know? I, in my opinion, in my opinion, there's nine bowlines that are very, very practical. Okay. Do they have particular names? Well, we have bowlin, bowlin on the bite, uh, bowlin as a stopper knot. Uh, we have... Uh, the Spanish bowl, and we have bueno, muy bueno, muy bueno. Muy bueno. And now yeah. I only I only know two different types of bowling. One is the rabbit through mm -hmm. the hole around the tree, back down the hole, and that is one that I was taught the use of on a sailing craft, mm -hmm. where I'd tie the bowling and then throw that to shore, and then they put that on the cleat because it doesn't. 
damage the rope. Doesn't damage the rope, and it doesn't also bind to the cleat, so you're able to get it off. Mm -hmm. And the other one that I learned was to tie it around yourself, so that if you right. fell out of the boat, you could. And that's basically when we teach the bowline to scouts, we always teach it around your waist to begin with, because it's a rescue. The most important application is to rescue yourself. So you want to tie the proper knot when you tie it around your waist, and and definitely never tie a square knot around your waist or things like that. That will become a slip knot and right. damage your fingers and damage your ribs. Another bowline that's very popular is a running bowline, the French bowline, and then we oui, oui. we're getting it to the nine that I mentioned. Uh, okay, so the running bowline, of course, would be your your tying it on the running line, right? right. And the French bowlin? The French bowlin is a bowlin that you tie to make two loops that you can sit. You can pass them mm -hmm. to your legs and be hoisted up. Okay. It's and like a rock climbing. Right. And, okay. and the way you remember that is the snail comes out of the hole and goes around the frog. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's the escargot bowlin. Yes. And the difference between the Spanish bowline and the French bowline is that the French has two set loops, whereas the Spanish bowline has the two loops are interchangeable. One can become bigger than the other. Mm. And uh, so they're both popular in, in uh, mariner's terms. Okay. Now my favorite knot is absolutely the taut line. Mm -hmm. The taut line changed my life when I learned how to tie that because all of a sudden I was able to tie Christmas trees to the top of the car mm -hmm. and I was able to make clotheslines at camp right. you know, that would stay taut and then we'd tie down our, our tent uh, flies. Right. If we had a storm, you know, the tents will rock back and forth and it becomes loose and you just go out there and give them a quick pull and they're tight again. That was a game changer for me. Yes, a very practical application is the killick. So the killick adds a couple of half hitches, so you use it to drag a log so that the timber hitch won't fall apart. Okay. So another knot that is becoming very popular here in the United States is a figure of eight. The right. figure eight That's a stopper has, knot. Has right. been, part, is yep. that, a stopper knot? Yep. It Climb. is one of the applications of the figure eight is uh, stop or not. But there are also many, many applications. It can be tied as a loop knot. It can be tied on the bite. It can be... So the fire department in, in all of North America, all fire departments have popularized the figure of eight because it doesn't damage the rope. So. This is very important because when you use a rope, you don't want to be cutting the end of it and whipping it again or, mm -hmm. or fusing it. You want to be able to use that rope again and be sure that the rope hasn't suffered right. from being under stress. So the figure of eight accomplishes that. And because of that, the figure of eight is becoming more and more popular. Now, Randy, you've used knots in uh, your climbing figure eight is a, mm -hmm. you use it to belay. It's a, you know, it's a very easy knot, but it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of practice, which gets me to my next point, Dave. Um, you know, knots are so dry and the, the way they're taught is in books. Yes, they are taught in books, but they also are taught through apps like on my iPhone. So let me show you one of those right now. This is an app called Knots 3D, which I happen to like. My question is, can you give us some examples that people can use to teach other people? Because looking at a picture it can be very confusing, especially for me. So, for instance, I, for the two half hitches, it's over and under and over and under. So you just follow that over and under and over and under. And I'm just putting a mnemonic into what the action is. Another that, that 
is very useful is in a in a sheet band would be up around another mm-hmm. itself. How about you know one of my <coughs> my favorite knot? You didn't ask me what mine is. You're right, I didn't. So David. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Randy, what's your favorite knot? The burglar's knot. Oh, or the, the thief's, thieves knot. knot. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that. That's a good story. I don't know anything. You don't know about anything it. about no, it? No, I just Google it. So oh. the thief, the thief's I'll let Dave knot. tell the story. The okay. thief's knot is a square knot, but instead of having the two short ends on the same side of the knot, it has them on opposite sides. You have a side. short end here and a short end here. Right. Exactly. The story being that sailors would tie the thief's knot and then a thief would come and think that it was a square knot because it looked very similar and untie it and go through the bag bag and steal something and then tie a square knot when the sailor comes back he sees that there is he had tied a thief's knot and now he has a square knot so he says oh somebody's been in my bag right so that's a function yeah, of cool the story. Stat. Except that <clears throat> I'm thinking that the person going through the bag is another sailor, and he knows that trick, so he just ties it back. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> not all not all sailors know the thief's knot, whereas the, the square knot for sailors is called the reef knot, a reef knot on a sailboat. <clears throat> the the name reef comes from reefing the sail when the mm-hmm. when the sail is in full display the wind is blowing on the sail whereas if the wind is too strong the sail has little ropes sewed into the sail so they use these ropes for tying the sail and making it smaller that action is called reefing the sail and thus the knot that is used for that is called the reef knot and all sailors on a sailboat knew a reef knot which is a square knot. Nice, nice. Do you know other uh, stories that you'd like to share with us? Well, the... I tell you what, we'll get to those stories right after this. Hi, I'm Coach Scott, and if you've been a loyal viewer of the Global Troop Resource for the past few years, you've probably guessed that we broadcast from a home-based studio. That said, We're preparing for a future where we'd like to take our show on the road. Our plan is to start by visiting other troops on the East Coast and broadcast in person from scout camps and scout reservations. If you'd like to be on our show or to see our plans, visit GlobalTroopResource.com. That's GlobalTroopResource.com. Now, back to the show. Okay, we're back. And David Dry Belvis is going to tell us a couple other stories about other knots. Very David. good. So, the, the bowline, of course, has the, the rabbit comes out of the hole behind the tree back into the hole. There are people, like I think speaking with you a, a little while back, that tell another story about a snake coming out of the hole and whatever. But... I like the rabbit comes out of the hole because the rabbit has to go behind the tree and in the bowline if they go in front of the tree which with a snake there is some ambiguity as to whether the snake goes in front of or behind the tree they don't get the knot proper it it won't be the bowline and it becomes a slip knot and just falls apart right so I like the, the rabbit better the, well, I think some people get confused and they have the snake in the grass. Oh, yes. Well, you see, the one that, that I sort of made up is the snake is, is actually resting on a fence. And he's actually a boa constrictor. And his name is Paul. And so you twist the rope so it becomes a letter P. And then his friend, the rabbit, comes up and mm-hmm. runs around the snake and back down through the hole. And then it becomes a knot. But that's why you call it a boa Bow line. Bow line. Yeah. I Bo-a-line. would think Bo-a-line. that the boa would constrict the rabbit and eat him. <laughs> oh. Your humor is very constricting. I find it very liberating. So tell us, Randy, yes, what sir. is your second favorite knot? Oh, that would be the forget me knot. <laughs> you sure that's there not is. your wife's favorite knot? 
Could be. Could be. So, uh, I guess transitioning, you know, we <coughs> use uh, knot tying and the knot tying relay in the lumberjack games. Mm -hmm. um, and you had mentioned the uh, timber hitch. Um, I use that as well. So, I try to make it fun and interesting for the boys. The timber hitch, the boys have to, we usually find a log somewhere on the reservation. We cut it up, <coughs> we bring it out. It's usually, I don't know, five to six feet long. It's probably about 12 inches. In, it's fairly substantial. Yeah. They have to tie a timber hitch on it, and they get help. And then they have to drag it. Right. Like 100 yards. And it's a relay race. And back and forth and back and forth. And they, they really like that. Um, so the killick would be the ideal. To so, make it. So you put a couple of half, half hitches after the timber, timber hitch, hitch so that you can drag it. And, and then... And then that is that is a game in and of itself. The yes. uh, the dragging of the uh, the timber hitch and the dragging of the timber. And then there's a knot relay, and the knot relay starts off with a mile run, and they, they tie a square knot, come back, and they, a taut line, and they get help. There's I usually have older boys there because it's usually first year, second year, they're um, and it's some leaders as well. Another another common application of that task is having to lift a log. So you put your rope over a crossbar and they have to tie a knot and then lift the, the log off the ground. So if you haven't tied a killick, again, it won't work. So again, it tests the timber hitch abilities. Right. So did you want to show us that book really? I, I wanted to show you a good reference book. This is... Uh, Knots and Rope Work by Jeffrey Budworth. Jeffrey Budworth is a founder of the International Guild of Knot Tires and uh, past president of the same association. Can we see his name there, Jeffrey Budworth? Mm, you're going to have to raise it up just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Awesome. I love this book because the pictures are extremely well, they're very, very well defined. Uh, and Jeff Budworth, whom I met in, a, in one of the meetings of the International Guild, is a great, great knots man. And there's nothing wrong with a Boy Scout handbook either. But if you want to go further, I would certainly encourage you to look at any of the books Jeffrey Budworth has put out about 40 or 45 books. In the reference sheet that I put in that PDF file that we will make, that we're making available, we also list the translations to Spanish, French, and German for all the not names. So if somebody has roots in another language, it helps them a little. Awesome. <clears throat> now. Do they translate that into Thailand? <laughs> Speaking of Taiwanese, right? Ah, there Taiwanese. you go. Taiwanese. Yeah, you're, uh, you're <laughs> Speaking about Thailand, when I was in Florida, I had a website that I'm trying to bring and make available to us here in Philadelphia. Our district in Miami was called the Hurricane District, and we had a website for pioneering which was considered the number one resource for pioneering in the world. And we'd get calls from Thailand and from India all the time mm. with consult consultations. Okay, I'm in building an inverted hourglass. Should I lash it this way? Should I lash it that way? What is the detail on this lashing? What knot is this? We can't uh, make it out in your uh, graphics. So... Uh, it was amazing the tremendous uh, response there is from Thailand. A lot of their pioneering is done with bamboo. And here I thought I was just throwing out a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, you had mentioned to me that this particular website got lost, basically. So if we've got viewers out there, give them the name of what it was, mm -hmm. and maybe they have some resource available to them. In this so it is a Hurricane District pioneering website. And 
here in America, people think that knots and pioneering is sort of a dying skill. In these other countries, it is an emerging skill where, where it's becoming very, very popular. Interesting. Is there a reason for that? Because they have a lot of competition. The reason scouting uses pioneering is because pioneering requires teamwork. So when you're building a, a gateway that is going to require 150, 200, 300 square lashings, if the whole patrol doesn't know how to tie a square lashing properly, perfectly, you are not going to build that gateway or that pioneering. Uh, right, that's just too many skill. lashings for one right. person. So you have to work as a, as a patrol and then you have to have a quality assurance person that is checking everybody to make sure that everything is whipped, that everything is tied properly and so forth. And uh, this builds patrol spirit. And this is, I think it built it, builds patrol spirit better than any other skill in scouting. So this is why they use pioneering so so often. Mm -hmm. So are there any additional books you'd like to show us? Um, I just wanted to uh, <laughs> mention a couple. One is the Weeblos Handbook. A lot, a lot of the boys that are in scouting have been Weeblos and in Weeblos you do have very very good graphics and uh, the other idea would be to go to old Boy Scout handbooks. This was my Boy Scout handbook when I was a Boy Scout. This was uh, two issues ago, okay. a Boy Scout handbook. And this had very, very good uh, not, not graphics. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons this book was reprinted was to change a little item that has to do with lashings. In, in this book, it said that the diagonal lashing was used when two timbers cross each other at an acute angle. The new concept, which is in unison with scouting all over the world, is that the reason for the diagonal lashing is mm -hmm when two timbers are not in touch and you need to bring them in contact with right. each other, that is at the last. It doesn't matter if the two timbers cross at a right angle. Okay. If they're not touching and you need to force them together, you're gonna use a diagonal lashing. Whereas when they're already in contact, you use a square lashing. Hmm. So it used to be an, an item of hot discussion Every time we went, well, in our book, it says that if the angle is a sharp angle, you use a diagonal. Well, we changed the publication and, and correctly. Another thing I wanted to share, and I brought a little example, is of a knot board. I have a very vast collection of knot boards. Uh, well, I don't know if it's vast. Some, somebody that has more than these, I have about 60 knot boards. Some are huge and some are little like this one. I wanted to share a good way for a troop to come up with a knot board is to have a knot board contest. If you say which patrol comes up with the best knot board, you will end up with knot boards. And it creates a very healthy uh, incursion into making knot boards and labeling knots and everything and and boys learning how to identify knots. Yeah, the big deal for me with tying knots is knowing what they're useful for. Right. Having something practical, having a need that it's going to fulfill. That's why the taut line was a game changer for me because I could use it in two or three places immediately. Right. I don't really want to learn a left-handed bird's knot when it doesn't do anything for me. And not to, not to digress, but again, that PDF that we're making available will have a use for each knot. So one of the, if we may, one of the 
sort of controversial uses knots is the square knot, where whereas we call a square knot the joining knot, mainly because it's a knot you have to learn to join Boy Scouts. <laughs> but historically, in the old concept, it was used to join two ropes. Now you have to clarify very, very carefully that it's for joining two ropes if they are of exactly the same thickness and the same stiffness. Mm -hmm. If they're not, you want to use a sheet bend, definitely. Now when you're tying a square knot and mm -hmm. they say it's for first aid, it's really not for rope at all, is it? It's right. for the bandage. Bandages, exactly. So that's a big deal to learn because everybody goes, square knot's for first aid. It lies flat and it blah, blah, blah. And I was thinking, when in first aid am I going to tie a piece of rope around somebody? So then it really right. is. It's when a you're bandage. doing bandage. Yeah. I, I, I teach, when I'm teaching knots, I teach a boy that when you're tying something with bandage, it gets so tight that you almost have to untie it with your teeth. I, I'm hoping that someday I have a dentist in my class <laughs> uh, that, that I'd like to hear his reaction to that. But it is very important, the fact that with a square knot, you pull both sides of one end of the knot and it, right, and it becomes through. a slip knot right. and unties very easily. So this is something that you definitely want to do with a square knot because if the patient, if the victim is in pain, you don't want to be fun fumbling with a knot and and causing more pain. You want to be able to untie it very easily. Great. Well, we're going to wrap up our show right after this. Hi, I'm Coach Scott from the Global Troop Resource. I'd like to share with you some information about a nonprofit called the Education Alliance for Amateur Radio. These are the guys that I called to help my troop complete the Radio Merit Badge, and they are awesome. If you have any interest in running the Radio Merit Badge for your troop and are on the East Coast, preferably the Mid-Atlantic region, they are an excellent resource. Their goal is to promote science, technology, engineering, and math education within organizations like the Scouts, plus communities like first responders and others who use or advance the use of amateur radio. Calling your attention to this nonprofit is just another way that Global Troop Resource is trying to put a thousand skills into every troop's backpack. You can learn more at www.radiostemalliance.org. And we're back, and we're going to wrap up the show with just a couple of comments from Randy and David. I just wanted to refer everybody to the website where we can click on the uh, sheet that will have the reference to the knots, the names of the knots, the mnemonic for each knot, the use for each knot, the translation of the names, and in some of the instances you can click on the hyperlink for the name of the knot and pull up the an actual video on how to tie it. So that would be an excellent reference. Uh, it's a work in progress, but... Awesome. So we'll get that up very shortly and we'll get those links going as well great well, Randy you guys touched on PDFs you touched on books you touched on websites but you, you forgot the most useful and, and popular site for learning about knots tell me what that is Randy well it was a TV show you guys don't remember that TV show back in the 80s mm. Knots Landing Knots Landing <laughs> <laughs> I would have never. That was great. All right. That said, thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. We will see you the second Wednesday of every month from September through June at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, broadcast on our Facebook channel. We have all of our archives stored out on the Global Troop Resource page on YouTube, so come visit us. And next time, night. join us live from Marsh Harbor in the Bahamas. <laughs> I wish. <laughs>